What's up everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life and TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of Put a Ring on It Season 2 Episode 3. I had said that I was not going to review this show, but due to the peer pressure of my lifers <laughs> and um, some of my peers, some of my YouTube peers also asked me why I wasn't doing this show as well. Um, I, I, I'm going to review it. I watch it because I said I was going to still watch it. Um, you can live tweet with me every Friday night doing this show at my twisted life L Y F the same as the channel name on Twitter. See me live tweeting. You get my open, honest opinion right at that moment. Um, tonight I will be live tweeting doing the premiere episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. So join me on Twitter for that, and then you know you get the recap sometime this week, probably by Tuesday. I think I usually put it up on Tuesday. So anyway. We're going to start this off. I did not recap the first two episodes. And this is really not going to be a recap either. It's going to kind of be a summary of the characters or the cast members. And some initial thoughts and my initial prediction. And then um, next week we'll be right on target. Uh, we're going to start off this year with three couples. Um, Alexa and Dorian. LaRonda and Sean. And Jessica and Eric. We bring back Dr. Nicole. She's still looking gorgeous as always. She still got that slick back ponytail with the big old, you know, whole pack of her in the ponytail. She's still wearing that this this season, even though in the promo still she had her hair down. Um, and the one twist that we have this year is that there are no boundaries. Now last year everybody was putting boundaries on their dates. You can't do this. You can't go here. You can't hold hands. You can't do none of that. So she starts off this season telling everybody to say what their boundaries are. Of course everybody had the same thing. No kissing, no hugging, no bumping uglies. That's what they wanted to do. And then Dr. Nicole told them, okay, well, we got that out the way. Throw all that out the window. There is going to be no boundaries. Because how can your partner or you fully take on this experience with boundaries in place at this stage y'all should know y'all mate and y'all already know if y'all willing to compromise or um yeah compromise to cater to their feelings without knowing what their boundaries are without them having to verbalize that to you um they probably been verbalizing it to y'all over and over and over again which is why y'all ended up in this show this show is basically insecure ass couples that's it. That's basically what this show is. Insecure ass couples who try to lock down a commitment from somebody that they couldn't do on their own. So they need help of um, a therapist, a psychologist. What is Dr. Nicole? Is she a therapist or a psychologist? Is a marriage counselor? Let me look that up. I have to figure some stuff out. Dr. Nicole Leach. She got doctor in her name. Nicole Leach. What are you? It's not Leach, it's La Beach. It's something like that. La Beach. Is it La Beach? Dr. Nicole La Beach. What's your credentials, girl? Dr. Nicole La Beach. She is the president and CEO of Volition Enterprises. Are you real, are you a real doctor? <laughs> I'm so real, what is she a doctor of? What you a doctor of? Dr. Nicole Beach, what is you a doctor of, girl? A master executive and relationship coach. A success strategist who has changed the lives of all who dare to strive for their personal. She's a success. She's not a real doctor. I mean, she's a real doctor. I guess she got the credentials behind her name. But a relationship coach, that's, that's what she is. She's a relationship coach. Okay. So with the help of a relationship coach, these people want to fix their lives. Get, get committed, find them some wives or something like that, you know, or become a wife. Um... What was I finna say about like this season? Also this season, a lot of these dates are going to be in front of each other. I don't know what the purpose of this is. I don't even understand the purpose of you going out on a date with other people to see if that's going to make your relationship stronger. Y'all should have figured that shit out before y'all got into a relationship. You should have stayed single and just dated instead of actually being in a committed relationship. Don't get in a committed relationship and then want to say, oh, okay, let's go ahead and date other people now. Unless that was your original intention. It don't make no sense. This this show concept doesn't make sense to me, but I'm still going to watch it. We're going to rock with it anyway. So let me try to get into it. 
Y'all know I'm judgmental as hell. If y'all know these people in real life, I don't care. Okay. Alexia and Dorian. They've been together 14 years. Off and on. 14 years. But they just recently moved in together. Um, way out in the sticks. You know, Atlanta got some sticks. And they out in the sticks. They house like a, like, like a wood cabin. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind that moving out in the sticks was Alexa's idea. Is it Alexia or Alexia? Alexia. Lex. I'm going to call her Lex. There's no doubt in my mind that was her idea to move out there. She trying to keep Dorian away from other hoes. He's a member of a group called Field Mob. Field Mob? Who is that? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I ain't never heard of them before in my life. I asked my Twitter peeps. And they hit me to a couple of songs. One that was done with Sierra. One that was done with Ludacris. And then some other one that's supposed to be a really, really, really popular song. I ain't ever heard of them. I Googled. I YouTube. I Wikipedia. I ain't ever heard of them. The one song that they got, um, I'm So Lonely or I Don't Want to Be Lonely. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, they took the hook from Sarissa's song. You know, any other night it would have been you and me. That song, they took that hook and put it in their song, and theirs sound horrible to me. My ears were bleeding. Okay, people like, oh, he got a hit with Sierra. I heard the song. Hit where? Where was it a hit? It sounded like somebody hit them in the throat while they was trying to produce this dog on track and the vocals came out sounding like trash that couldn't have possibly been a hit if it was it was only because sierra was on the track because they were signed with dtp you know uh disturbing the peace i looked it up i looked it up they google page or their wikipedia page was just created back in may that must have been when they signed up for this show okay now i could have sworn he said field mob were Grammy nominated. There is nothing on the website at all that indicates that any song they were on was Grammy nominated. Unless it was that one song that DTP had that was Grammy nominated. And since they was part of that song, then that's probably why they was Grammy nominated. But other than that, Field Mob themselves, I don't see nowhere, no how that they was Grammy nominated. If I'm wrong, leave it in the comments section so I could be proven wrong. Yeah, I don't mind being proven wrong if I'm wrong, but I didn't see no Grammy nomination nowhere. When they said Field Mob, I was like, did he mean to say Goody Mob? And then I looked at him deeply and I was like, no, he ain't with Goody. He not with Goody. I think that they are very popular maybe on the East Coast and maybe the Southern East Coast, like Atlanta, North Carolina, maybe the tip of Virginia that area because everybody that responded to me on twitter that's where they all were from anybody that was from like the midwest like where i'm from or down south like in texas or over on the west coast none of those people said they ever heard of them either it was only people from atlanta north kakalaki and the tip of virginia that said that they had heard of that group or at least that song the one that i want to be lonely song or whatever anywho um, where was I at? Oh, I'm talking about, I had I had I had a whole biograph biography about them. Like they 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 didn't hit the scene to 2000. Um, the last project they did was 2006. Smooth, which is a uh, smoke, which is Dorian. He um signed with another label in 2008. They canned his whole project in 2009, so he never put out anything else from 2006. I say him and Alessia, like I said, been together for 14 years, off and on. She must have been his biggest fan. She had to be. Because she think he Tupac or something. Every time that they think about her mouth, he's a rapper. He's a celebrity. Do she know who you are? I bet you they want their autograph. She had to be their biggest fan. Like, if you go to her Instagram page right now, she could talk about me talking about this new dress that she just bought from, you know, Sheen or whatever. All her hashtags is like smoke, black, field mob, black love, Albany, Ashy the Classy, which was one of their albums, I think. Um, From the Rooter to the Tudor, which was a single they did. And um, Light Poles and Pine Trees. Light Poles and Pine Trees. I think that was the name of an album, too. That's her hashtags on everything that she posts. That ain't got nothing to do with him. He may not even be in the picture. She's still posting all that. 
she don't even give a shout out to her own little career. She did play uh, ball in IBL, International Basketball League. I forgot what they call it for the women, the WABA, something like that. Yeah. She played for the Savannah Lady, Savannah Lady Warriors too, I believe. Anywho, she insecure as fuck. Insecure. She think he always off cheating. I thought that she said he did cheat. But I do recall him saying he ain't never cheated on her. That's not something that he would do. He's not a cheater. She just always accused him of cheating. But now since he's on this show, he's going on dates with this chick named Kaya. Or Kia. It's Kaya. It was Kaya. Um, He got his eye on her. He like him some Kaya, baby. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He been into her from the jump. Now, she kind of reminds me of Alexia in appearance. She's a little bit more fuller in the lips, a little more fuller in the hips. Um, but she reminds me of her. Um, this is the girl who says that she don't want to be number two in no man's life. She's not going to be number two. She's going to be in the front, in the foremost, right? And she's really pushing herself on Dory. She really is. But he ain't holding her back. Not one iota. He ain't holding her back. Um, in this week's episode, Dorian said he getting all he can from this experience. You know, they they had to go on a double date this particular episode. And, and, and Alexia was over there in the corner just straight mean mugging him. Alexia was mean mugging him from the corner. When her date walked up, she was standing there looking at the restaurant, looking at them through the window. She was already mean mugging him. So when her date walked up, he was just another prop. That's all he was. She handed him her umbrella like her, her take this. They walked across the street. The date trying to talk to her and communicate, you know, have conversation. And she's sitting there. I mean, he keeps saying my name. He keeps saying my name. To the point that Dorian and, and Kia, Kaya, they got up in there and walked out. But Kaya bold ass, she decides to take his hand and hold his hand. Now, so Alexis sitting there like, hey, no, ain't no holding hands. Boundaries, girl. Y'all ain't supposed to be having boundaries. Ain't going to be no holding hands. Let her hand go. You're going to get popped upside the head or something like that. You know what I'm saying? She's doing like that. And Kaya just walking out with her man hand. Like, ha, 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 rude bitch. I'd have been mad too if that's how you played me. But damn, don't why are you bring your insecurities to the party, girl? Why did you sign up for a show like this? When Dr. Nicole said y'all was gonna go date on dates in front of each other, why use the say then say then, you know, I can't handle this, you know, this is not my cup of tea. Yeah. It apparently it seems that on this particular season, the dates know what they're signing up for. Last season in season one. The dates were told that they were going to go out with people whose relationship was on the brink of breaking up. Okay? So, that's what made them be okay with going out with these people. On this particular episode, this season, these dates are fully informed of what's going on. Fully informed. And it seems like everybody, or at least Kaya, and maybe like one or two other people, their whole agenda was to make them forget about their real boo and choose them. It's like a competition for them. That's what it is. Okay, so anywho, um, I don't know what Alexia's goal was when she decided to come on to this show. I gotta get... I, I, mm, I got my notes over here, y'all. Y'all know that. I don't know what her goal was to come on this show. Um... It seems like they want to make their mates jealous. Or maybe Alexia thought that she could make Dorian jealous if he saw her out with another man. But it flipped on her. Because her jealousy and her insecurities are on 10, honey. They on 10. Fuck that. They on 20, twin, twin. They all the way off the kilter. She is so insecure. And she's a beautiful girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, she threatened to whoop his ass every time he say a word that's beginning with the letter K. Okay? It don't even have to be Kai's name. And I'm actually glad that he's going on continuous dates with her from the jump. Um, he says that Kai is able to give him an uninhibited feeling, an uninhibited reign about himself. You know, get to laugh a little. Something that he's lacking from his relationship. Because according to both of them, even uh, Alexia said this, that used to be her. Not no more. When people say that, you know, 
people change she changed on him she switched it up okay i don't even understand why they moved in together at this point it probably was just to settle her mind down a little bit just to ease her up a little bit just say all right you know i ain't going nowhere but she's still scared every time he walk out the door every time he leave out the sticks she's still nervous next up we have loranda mabry and jay dukes also known as sean uh, who I like to call imitation Cat Williams because he looks and sounds like Cat Williams to me. LaRonda is an engineer and an investor who does very well lucratively for herself, for them, basically, because she's basically taking care of the household. She's the one bringing home the bacon. But not only is she bringing home the bacon, she still got to cook it up, too. Because he's an upcoming actor and comedian. Now, Twitter was saying that he's hilarious in this show, that they make him laugh. I think he's just a fucking joke. That's all I see about him. They've been together three years, and he is so intimidated by her, yet at the same time, manipulating of her. Um, in the last episode, he said to his date that she makes more money than him. She's always been there for him. She always supports him, holds him down. But he'd rather date somebody that's in the entertainment field, like his date was. She was a singer. Um, because they understand the hustle of being an entertainer. I'm like, this is a black woman who is in a white dominated field, engineering, and she's a successful investor. Trust me, baby, she knows how to hustle. Okay? She knows how to hustle. But I guess she's not an entertainer hustle. Like, what is this she's not understanding about your hustle if you say she's always supportive of you? Um, he got daddy issues. He got daddy issues. Um, his daddy wasn't around to show him love and affection. He said his daddy was always financially there, which makes me believe that he is scared to be financially stable because he don't want to be nothing like his daddy. Okay. Yet at the same time, um, he believes he needs to be the breadwinner in the family. He don't necessarily, I don't think he, he want to make more money than uh, LaRonda. He just want to make more money than her. He wants her to make less than what he does. He wants to keep his job as a comedian and for her to be working in Subway. That's basically what he wants. And because she is the breadwinner, he feels she going to walk away just like his daddy did. You know what I'm saying? This dude is a classic manipulator. Classic manipulator. He went on his date, had no issues. She even ironed his fucking clothes for him on his date. Okay, she ironed his damn clothes. Um, but when she went on a date, this nigga got physically sick. Or at least he pretended to. He went to the bathroom and closed the door so the cameras can see. And he's wretched in the bathroom. Now, she was gone when this happened, right? But guess what? When she got home, he made sure he told her that he couldn't stomach seeing her out with another man. It made him physically sick. Now... He wants her to feel guilty. He wants her to feel guilty about going. Um, that he can't stomach it. That he's probably going to hurt himself when she ain't around. And she uh, can't, can't do that. She can't do that to him. She loves him enough that she don't want to hurt him. She's scared of hurting him because he may hurt himself. It's all in their body language. She looks at him before she answers any question. How was your day today? And he said, don't look at me. You know what I'm saying? What time is it? Don't look at me. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly. She looks at him every time they ask her a question. Like she's looking for his approval. You know what I'm saying? She is terrified to be herself around this dude. Um, She plays the Dalton wife. Uh, I'll buy your clothes. I'll buy your clothes. I'll pay your rent. I'll cook your dinner too. As soon as I get home from work, <laughs> you know, so he won't feel emasculated. So he won't feel like the small man that he is in stature. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, cute dogs. You know what I'm saying? They have this, 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 this 
image about themselves. You know what I'm saying? They like the thug out frat boys. They 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 the hoes. You know what I'm saying? Cute dogs may not even graduate. They the party animals and stuff. The atomic dog. That's a cute dog. He's supposed to be cute. This dude breaks all the stereotypes of what a typical Q would look like. And I think he had a double brand on his arm, but you need two brands on. And his brands are huge. What is going on? Anyway, Mighty Mouse. Check it. I think he's an abuser. I think he's an abuser. It may not be physical. It may just be emotional and mental, but I think he's an abuser nonetheless. Okay? When he met his date, his date was a little bit taller than him because he had on heels. She had on heels. And he made the statement that he loves a woman to tower over him because that way he could feel like a boss. How does a woman towering over your little short Napoleon Dynamite ass make you feel like a boss? Unless at some point you are trying to dominate her, control her. To give you that boss bitch attitude. Abuser. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Classic manipulator. This motherfucker dropped so many tears. That when I'm watching the episode. I think it's raining. I swear I break out my goddamn umbrella. I break it out. I'm saying. Some of y'all may say. No he's just a man that's being vulnerable. And we don't allow our black man to be vulnerable. No this nigga being manipulative. That's what he is. That's what he doing. What did Dr. Nicole tell him? You are trying to have tactical control over her. Tactical means that you are strategizing your control. I wish he would have dug it a little deep on his throwing up. Mm. Then there's Jessica and Eric. I don't know what their last names are. Jessica and Eric. Je Eric won't let that damn hairline go. Just let it go, dog. Let it go. Let it go. I forgot how the Frozen song go, but it's let it go. He need to let that shit go. Jessica is his trophy girlfriend. That's what she is. You know what I'm saying? He has an image to uphold. He's former NFL. You know, they've been dating four years. They always get the trophy girlfriend. Um... And she comes loaded with a bag of insecurities. Um, I think that there may have been a point in their relationship, they didn't say this, that she had a serious pop-off game. And usually with dudes with that football image, that celebrity status, um, like a pop-off queen. It makes them feel love. It makes them feel wanted. He finds it cute. He finds it hilarious. So she fighting on me. Because she has a mouth. I already know Jessica has a mouth. Okay. Um, but I think as he's getting older, he kind of sound like T.I. when he talk. I think as he's getting older, he's realizing now that they have a surface level relationship. And he wants something with a little bit more depth. Although, Jessica thinks that he wants to remain a hoe the rest of his life. So why you with him, ma? She's trying to force this commitment on him. Okay. Um, he sat up all night with his date. You know what I'm saying? Came in a little bit tipsy because they was drinking their ass off. He didn't even pay attention to Jessica in the room. He saw her come in. <laughs> but Megan looked like, I forgot her name. She held his attention. She looked like Megan the Stallion to me. She held his attention. Now, he didn't find himself physically attracted to her. To, attracted to her. However, she had his fucking attention. If they had had one or two more conversations, oh, she'd got him. Because conversation to make a motherfucker fall in love. Conversation to make you forget somebody ugly. You have the right conversation. That's how I used to get my little phone boyfriends all the time. I used to accidentally dial the wrong number. Or they accidentally wrong, dial the wrong number. And then we sit on the phone just talking all the dog the time. I ain't never seen them. Never. And I'm all giddy. And every time I see his number call now, I know it's him. Conversation will get your ass. And then when you meet him in person, you're like, oh, God. He, but you like him now. You know what I'm saying? If he'd have kept talking to Meg the Stallion looking like he'd have been there with her, but he decided he wasn't gonna go out with her no more because you know he wasn't physically attracted. He not only wants death, he also wants to still be attracted to her as well. She's not the trophy wife. You know what I'm saying? She looks doesn't she doesn't I ain't gonna say she looks homely, but she looks like the girl next door. And he needs somebody who looks like she fits that celebrity mold. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think one of his biggest issues with this Megan look like too was she was confident in self. 
Jessica's insecurity is actually attractive to Eric to me. Um, and one reason why I think that the Megan look like was confident in self was because the way baby girl was fucking up that food. Child, she was fucking up that food. Every bite she took, like he was thinking like, damn, she gonna eat all that? She ain't gonna cut it up and make it little morsels? She was like, no baby, I'm gonna eat this steak right in front of your face. This is good. He had his like little bowl of soup that he was barely touching. And she probably said at the end of the night, you gonna eat that? Let me get, let me get that from you. I'm saying, that's how she was. She was confident in her damn self, I'm saying. Eric is a like say a former NFL player. He used to having hoes be all over him. This girl didn't have a clue of who he was. That might have been a turn off as well. You know, she wasn't fawning all over him. Um, but yeah. But that's pretty much how this the whole situation went. Dorian is gonna go back out with Kai because he felt like their second date was ruined by being in the presence of Alexia. Alexia is not gonna go out with her date. I don't even think she moved his, remember his name. She was so rude and disrespectful to him. He's trying to have a conversation. He's like, why are we talking about him? Our whole conversation is about your dude. He's sitting right there and your whole focus on him. I'm trying to find out about you. And you can't, you know, hold a conversation. You know, so I don't think he would have wanted to go out with her again either. Okay? But anyway, they're not going to go out again. But Dorian said he going out with Kai again. And Alexia is pissed off because she like, he going out with her ass. Make it seem like y'all in the god dog on relationship. Okay? It's called dating. You signed up for a dating show, sis. You may have been in a relationship with somebody. You may be trying to put a ring on it, but the whole premise of this show is to date. I guess you wanted to be like Hollywood last year. I want her to date other people. Well, I want her to date other people, not just one. But you're supposed to be trying to build connections. If you're trying to build connections, you no know, playing musical people ain't the way to do it. Okay. Um, I, I do think that Dorian and Alexia is going to make it to the end with one another. They've been together for 14 years off and on. Why break the cycle? She got them to move in after 14 years. She probably wait 14 more for that ring. Um, LaRonda and Sean, or Jay Dukes is his name. Um, I think they're going to stay together as well because she's afraid to leave him. And he's going to make her feel guilty about leaving it. With his manipulation, okay, you know, um, because if she decided to walk away, he's the first thing gonna say, I knew you couldn't handle a man like me, I knew you couldn't handle uh, be, be supportive, you didn't understand my struggle. That's what he was like, you know, she gonna stick around. Jessica and Eric, I don't think gonna make it. Oh, let me go back. Um, <sighs> who, um. LaRonda and Sean, they're not going out with their dates again. Um, Jessica and Eric, I don't think that they're going to make it. I just don't. Um, also, the Megan looking like, I think he didn't want to hurt Jessica's feelings. Because when he came home that night, baby, he was telling her, I ain't never had a conversation like that for my life. She enlightened me. I enjoyed it. And Jessica like, what you mean? Your life? And he kept pressing it in. He's like, in my life. I ain't never just sat there and just really was interested in somebody. And they was interested in what I was saying. He, and he was telling her, this is what we don't have in our relationship. And she's like, I thought that's what we had. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Um, he decided not to go out with Megan looking like a ginga, which I think he really wanted to. I'm telling you, because conversation to make it, it catch you up. I think he really wanted to. And then on the flip side, Jessica's like, I'm going to go out with my date again. I don't think he really liked that dude. I think that you just wanted to be the one. You wanted to win. Eric said he wasn't going to go. And you're like, well, I'm going to go. You don't want to go out with that dude. You playing the game, Jessica. You playing the game. And you wasn't listening to your man. You weren't hearing him. You know, he tell you stop being so fucking shallow and here you going. Still being shallow and insecure. You're gonna lose him. I don't know if he worth losing or not, but you're gonna lose him. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me update y'all on last season if y'all didn't know. Hollywood and Ashley, they're not together no more. They broke up shortly after the show. Most most people already know that. Um, to make it Vince, they still together. They had an engagement, a wedding plan for September. I think the wedding is still on. Um, Mike and Shay, they were supposed to get married this July. They called off the wedding because they bought a house. They did this whole little thing on Instagram like they was pretending they had got separated. No, they bought a damn house together. 
Um, but technically, they still engaged. She just wanted the ring, and he got dogged away. She got a ring, and Whitney is still part of the throuple. And he claimed that Shay got a better relationship with the son. If so, it had to do with his mama. I don't understand how you can stay with a bitch like a girl like that. I just really don't. But I guess you shallow too, shit. Anywho, that's it, y'all. Put a ring on it. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. Check me out on Friday. We live tweet doing the show again. And then you'll get this recap again on Sunday of next week. Um, again, if y'all on Twitter tonight, I'll be live tweeting for Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, at My Twisted Life, L-Y-F, the same as the channel name. Like the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Bring a friend over and tell them to come on in to watch. And um, leave comments down in the comment section. I love talking to you. Peace.